everybody, welcome to the preview of round 12, the start of the buy rounds. We've got four teams with the buy this week, I believe Sydney, Jerry West, North Melbourne, and Brisbane. There's already been one game played today. It was Carlton beating Port Adelaide in Adelaide by around 37, 36 points. Um, back of the last quarter, um, I made a pretty good last quarter, actually. I think it's seven goals in the last quarter. I think Walsh and Cripps got about 10 or 11 possessions each. Um, Walsh had an absolutely fantastic game. Also got 13 or 14 tackles too. So that was pretty good. Um, but they absolutely smashed him. With that one, we'll go over some of the scores of players shortly with that. So we'll start with the preview. Um, and let's start with our first game. <laughs> All right, we'll start with the first game. We might as well start somewhere different. We'll start with Bombers Forever versus Punters Paddock. It's 10th versus 2nd. Uh, Pre-match projections, 359.9 to 385.3 for Punters, who projected to stay on their winning path. They've won the last three or four in a row, as you can tell. Um, and Bombers Forever uh, just rock solid on the bottom of the ladder. So it's uh, let's start off with the full forwards. It's Walker and Fritch averaging about 30 each. Um, oh, sorry. Let's start off with the players already played. So after tonight, Bombers Forever had three players play, um, and their projection drops down to 334.7. So a few players down their projection. They've got 129 points already. Horn Francis as a half forward got 38, up 2%. But Zach Butters, Butters was down as a utility, down 26% and got 63 while Ollie Wines as a tackler was down 30% and got 28, uh, whereas Punters Paddock had no one play tonight. Um, well, they had some players on the bench. Newman, who normally been getting a run lately, would have got 51 as a halfback, so he didn't play him. And Finlayson was the sub. Um, the rest of the team, we've already gone the full forwards. Uh, King is going to be the half forward um, against Horn Francis. And Dawson, who's been getting, I think, 100 the last couple of weeks, as utility against the Hawks, so he hopefully does nothing. Um, English and Gorn in the ruck. Um, historically, Gorn hasn't done well against Darcy, I heard, so we'll see how he goes. Uh, Saligo, who did get subbed out injured last week, but he's obviously been picked for the side. And Trelaw, who plays Friday night. Um, McGrath and Sinclair. McGovern as halfback's been pretty good. Gets the Saints, halfbacks do well against the Saints, and Keane as well. Um, and then Viney is the other tackler with the loophole plays will be Hugo Hagen playing Friday night against the Pies, and Dacos playing Friday night against the Dogs. So that's that one. So Punters Paddy projected to win, and after tonight, projected to win by more because Bobbins River was slightly down in the projections. Let's go to the next game. It's Sugar's Daddies, who are first in the ladder, versus Renegades, who are currently fourth. Um, players have played tonight, a loophole player and a couple other players. Sugar Daddies are on five because Charlie Dixon, uh, was not, he was left without a, without a ruck. Um, so Charlie Dixon went to the ruck and got five um, as a ruckman. I think it was five hitouts. Didn't get any goals and got subbed out, I think, just before halftime or after halftime. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and he was subbed out injured. Um, so with five, however, um, a loophole play was Sam Walsh, who, considering Rao's averaging 57 as, 51 as a tackler, probably take Walsh as a utility, um, 111.5. Um, and also looking in the midfield, he got 13 tackles. So we've got 67 as a tackler. He got uh, 33 possessions. So he had a pretty good game, probably worth a pick seven in the mid-season draft, if you ask me. Maybe throw in another pick here and there. Um, good good value. <laughs> um, and the other team, Renegades, had De Koning, who had a really good game. And got only got 89 to Tilly, 25 as a full forward, 28 as a half forward, 36 as a, as a tackler, and the ruck as a 35. So had a pretty solid game. However, it looked like he either got winded or done his shoulder or something at the very end of the game. So I'm just going to see what happens there. Um, other players that played tonight. Um, well, it looks like he might be putting him in his utility already. Um, he's put, ca taken Kelly out. So he might take the 89 on his utility. Uh, but Akers um, played and didn't get a run, obviously. 
Um, so the team is Petraka, full forward, and Chol. So Marbiel gets his first game. And Dale's a half forward against Langford. Um, Sarong and Utility. We know p- at the moment that Coney's going to go in there as well. Darcy in the ruck. So should be quite a few points in that one. Uh, Kelly and Merritt in the mids. Day and Martin as the other as the followers. Wangley and Malera as the halfback and against Maynard. And Raul and Colwell as the tacklers. So... Pre-match projections was 350.4 to 356.7. After today, pre-match projections is 340 to still, obviously, Renegades has had no one play. However, if you add the extra 21 in there, Sugar Daddy is projected to win. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. Or no, well, we've got to add the other other 10 points in there. So so if you look at, if you once you put the loophole players in, the projections are still going to be pretty even. So pretty good contest for first versus fourth. Be interesting to see if Sugar Daddy's uh, dominant run comes to an end or not. Um, how many games have they lost? I don't know. What? Let's have a look. Round one, Sugar Daddy's won. Round zero, they lost to me, but they had no on play. Round two, Sugar Daddy's won. Round three. They lost to Renegades. So Renegades got the win over him last time. And that might have been... Oh, that was a close one. Uh, so, three, nine, so their last loss actually was against Renegades. So, interesting. Yes. Can Renegades do the double? So that's that one there anyway. So let's move on to the next game. It's... Uh, third versus fifth. So that's two top five com- contests this week, which is fantastic. Second Destroyer, who are currently third versus Maltese Falcons, who are currently fifth. Pretty much rejections, 383 to 382. So another close one on the cards here, which is fantastic. Um, no one's played tonight. Well, there's been a loophole player played for Second Destroyer tonight, which was George Hewitt, who probably is not going to get a run, to be honest. Um, whereas Maltese Falcons have had a couple of players play. They've had Harry Mackay, who did get his goals late, got 39 as a, as a full forward and kicked two of those goals in the last quarter. Um, we'll get 48 as a half forward, um, but he's obviously full forward up 15%. And Cripps, who, as, as a follower, only got 36, but all of his positions, I think he had 10 possessions in the last quarter. So didn't have a great one. Didn't have too much of a great one there. Um, actual fact, he got... 11 kicks, 11 handballs, and only three clearances, which is a bit weird for Crips. Um, anyone else play today? Not really. So uh, Peter Wright's a full forward against Mackay. Lacocious and Myers as the half forwards. Flanders and Dacos as the utilities. He will need to take his team out because Meek is injured. So then Rees will need to come in for Meek. I'm presuming that's the only other option he's got. Karen Breeze has got the buy, so yep, Ned Breeze will need to come in because Ned Breeze is playing. Uh, and Cameron's been in really good form and should get a few hit outs against Darcy, you would think. Brayshaw versus Miller. Um, Oliver is up against Cripps, who's got, who already got 36. Ridley, after seven, after having a massive game last week, um, is up against Stephen May, who also had a pretty good game last week too. And then the tacklers are still and crisp um, with those ones. And Garcia is being loopholed Saturday um, against who's loophole in for? Where's he going to put him? Hmm. Anyway, he's loopholed against the West Coast on that one. So that's the that's that game there. Single Destroyer versus Maltese Falcons. Just a disclaimer, everyone. These scores aren't finalised. I pretty much started this straight after the game. Um, so there may be a bit of an adjustment to some people's scores if there is a stat adjustment. But you can look at that tomorrow. Um, let's go to the next game. It's Gators Bitches, who after last week dropped out of the five and went to seventh versus Top Gun, who are ninth. Um, with this one, it pretty much rejections was 362.7 to 383.2. After tonight, Top Gun's are still projected to win. Both teams have players play. Uh, top uh, Gators Bitches are 364.4 and Top Gun's are 376.9. So slightly down for... Top Guns on that one. Um, 
Interesting to see what they do because Penaveri is in plane. Houston was a loophole and got 24 as a half fall, which is what Penaveri is averaging. Does he take that or does he try to or does he try to put someone else in there? And William Drew was a tackler, was down 18% and got 28 as a tackler. Uh, for Gators bitches, they had Kerno, who was down 8% as a full forward and got 37. Um, while Ivan Soto, back from injury, went into the ruck, it was up 15% and got 38 for that one. So, Ivan, I will break you. Um, other players, Waterman, averaging five goals a game at, at, at um, off the stadium. So, in St. Kilda, haven't been all that chopped. So, he should probably get his average, you would think. And Sharp is my half four at the moment. However, I am loopholing Dust, uh, Dylan Moore, and, and considering Max King. So uh, we'll see what I'll do with that one. Um, Bont and Anderson as the utilities. Uh, Wits is up in the ruck against Essendon. So um, he should have a pretty good game. Uh, Max Holm and Laird as the midfielders. Newcomb and Duggan as their followers. Halfback will be Short versus Ryan. So Ryan's got the big advantage on that one. And Connor Nash as the tackler. Um, other options for myself, well, besides Ollie Henry. Ollie Henry against Richmond. I didn't even think about that. What a dick. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I need to play Ollie Henry against Richmond. Ah, I think about it. And other than that, not many other options. Whereas, um, oh, Head Reader in pretty much. And then he's got Moyle not playing, Pune injured, Keys, and Aish. Other options for Top Guns. So. Should be another close one. So all games, well, they're going to be fairly close, which is fantastic. Let's look at the last game. It's Rangers Anonymous versus Gods of Olympus. Eighth versus sixth. Pre-match rejections. Rangers Anonymous, 321.1. Haven't really got much of a team to play against Gods of Olympus. Predicted for 355.7. No one has played tonight, and no one was loophole tonight. Uh, it looks like... Um, Rangers and Omas don't even have a loophole player to play because everyone's injured or got the bye. And uh, God's Olympus had Farrell play tonight who didn't do too much at all. Um, full forwards, Pickett versus Goulden. Goulden full forward, he's got the bye. So I have to see how Hawkins goes. Uh, I see. Interesting. Maybe you should, maybe you should put um, Darcy as... Uh, maybe you should no. Nah, maybe you should put sort of that, like a Hayden Young or a um, Sicily or someone else as your loophole, and play stringers full forward, and not play Hawkins at all. Interesting choice. Anyway, Cameron half forward and stringer, Vlaston and Marshall, Flynn for his first game in the ruck, is coming in against O'Brien. Um, another rough choice, is it? Um, Baker versus Crouch, McRae and Amon. Amon's been on fire lately. Uh, Darcy Moore and Jai Clark, Jordan Clark. Um, ha Harley Reid. Oh, well, well, Mick won't like that. Gets Elliot Yo and for that one there. So, God's Olympus projected the win. Rangers just are lucky to field eight on the side with that one. Uh, let's have a look, quick look at this week's game. Um, Thursday night, obviously, Adelaide Oval. Tomorrow at Marvel, so the wind the, won't affect that. I believe it's going to be fairly wet and raining most of the week. So, um, yeah, let's have a look at that. See what happens. Weather in Melbourne. Let's have a quick look. For the Hawks game on Saturday, uh, it looks like it should be fine most of the day, not, not raining. Um, West Coast weather in Perth. Um, got my phone, guys, and I'm just having a quick look for everyone. See, phone, you can't see there. Um, weather in Perth on Saturday. No, nah, looks like it should be good. Um, Melbourne's going to be good for Geelong. Alice Spring, we don't bother. And the Gold Coast. Gold Coast on Sunday. And my dog's barking. Gold Coast and that. So... Although they've said it's going to be lots of rain, it looks like the game's going to be okay, but just keep an eye out. It might be fairly rain. So other than that, that should probably do us for the night, for the preview. 
Uh, good luck to everybody this week. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, go the Hawks. Go the Gators. And um, see you all later. Millie!